Hello, I'm Tiam Seng. Welcome to part 2 of the Structural Modeling. Let's change the view background a little bit with the new gradual background. That makes the grid easier to see. Perhaps we we'll just try to change our grid a little. Maybe it's not too bad, so let's stick with this grid annotation. Now let's create the site and the zone and the structure that we are going to store the frame in. To create the structure, we need to go to the Sections tab. Let's create a structure and also a framework where we want to store this particular frame. Now you will notice that the, as I start to create a framework, the storage area will be updated with the new structure and framework that I've created. And I can go ahead and create a sub framework as well. You can see that the storage is been updated as I create the sub framework. Yeah, this is the storage I'm talking about. With the storage set, we are not concerned about navigating to the right hierarchy. Next, we are going to define our bit profiles that we are going to use. For this case, I'm going to start with the two columns first. Besides the profile, I can also set the justification, which is the middle. Single and repeat allows me to create single beam or multiple beam. Continuous will allow me to create beams that are continuous. So I'm using the repeat to create out my first column and also my second column without going back to the to select the manual again. Remember to enter or select finish when you have finished the command. Let's change the profile to universal beam to create the roof profiles. Let's change our justification now to be on the center top rather than the center middle for this roof profile. For this roof profile, since it's continuous, we are going to use the continuous method of creating the sections. So we have the first point, the second point slightly above at 1500. And we select the third point so you can see the effects of using the continuous method of creating the roof. Next, we are going to extend this beam slightly from the left. Let's use the extend command and say we want to extend the start by a certain distance. Even though we key in the value of 1200, you can see that the beam goes back to where it is because we had automatic connection selected when we are creating the beam. So we have to take away that connection so that we can extend the beam the way we want it to. Let's use the extend command again. Now you can see that we are able to extend the beam successfully because there's no connections there.
Next, we are going to split this beam so that it can be connected to the column in both sides. You first select the beam and then you select the column and you can see the split point there and now the beam has been split into two. Now we will properly connect the beam to the column again. This time we select the columns. We select the endpoints of the beam that we want to connect to the column. And you can see the system automatically trims the beam to the side of the column. Let's do the same operations on the other connection. Here's a chance to see my operations again for this second connection. Next, we'll add connection to the apex. The simplified version of this work is to create a mitre for the apex and it looks quite good but the more correct way is to create a connection between the two beams so you can see that what the system have done is that it has actually used the first beam that we select which is the owning section and the second beam that we select which is the attached section and we cut the owning section with the attached section and attached section with the owning section so we get this funny shape that you see there and but we can modify the joint and give it a connection and this will allow me to actually make the connection looks like a proper apex joint so let's select the apex conch okay but we need to still change a few items that you see there. First is the information about the justification line, which is now at the C bottom. We want it to be at the C top, the center top. And the next thing is the Y direction, which is actually in the down side. And that's more or less created our apex connection very nicely. And the last thing we need to do is to trim the extract section which is, is now in an angle but we can trim it to the east. So there we have it, a very nice connected apex with an apex horns connection. Next, I'm going to create connections for the column to the roof and I can select two connections two joints first and then select the connection specification I select the joints that I want and I can change the property if I want to and that's it the two connections have been properly created in the next video we'll continue to work on this frame and create the whole structure that we'll see in our first video. Remember to join us. Bye!